Let's take a look at Studio One's auto filter. The auto filter will allow you to manipulate the frequencies of your audio, allowing you to create basic filter sweeps and intricate tempo-based rhythm filter patterns. Now we can access the auto filter by pressing F7 and opening up the effects tab within our browser. Here within the personas folder, we, we can click on the down arrow. Auto filter is here. I will click, hold, and drag that onto our first track. Close that out. F7 and close out our browser. There is another way that we can access our effects devices. And so if I select the second track here, press F4 to open the inspector. Down below within this inserts area, I'll click the plus symbol. The personas folder is already open here. Just clicking that arrow. And then in alphabetical order, our effects are listed. Here is the auto filter. I'll go ahead and select that. And our second instance opens up. Now I'll go ahead and close this one down and F4 to close out the inspector. Come back to our first track here, the synth box, and I'll go ahead and play this back real quick just so you can hear the unprocessed audio signal that we're working with. And actually let me open up the auto filter on this track and bypass that real quick. So this is our original audio loop. I'll stop that and then we'll go ahead and start from the top here as we do in all of my tutorials and make our way across and cover each of the parameters in detail. And we'll start with the power here so we can just click to activate or deactivate the device. Next to that we have bypass which we've already seen. We're going to let our original audio signal pass through the, through, through the device without being affected without actually turning it off. We then have an area for storing and managing our user presets. So if we've made some adjustments that we would like to save and use in future songs, then we can just click here, store that as a preset. Uh, we can replace, store as the default preset. So whenever we open up auto filter, that particular uh, preset will load. We've got load preset file, import, export, and show in browser. Next to that, we have left and right arrows where we can navigate between the different presets that come included with Studio One or that we've, re we, that we've created ourselves. So if we store a preset, then it's going to show up within this menu here. And we start off on the default. So if I hit the right arrow, then we can see that we move to baseline one, which is the first one here. We then have side chain, which we can click to activate. And we're going to take a look at that in more depth. As we make our way through the parameters here, I'll go ahead and click again to deactivate. We then have an area for working with automation, which is a bit beyond the scope of this video. If you'd like to know more about automation within Studio One and your effects devices, just click on the link here. We then have compare, copy, and paste. Now compare will work in a way that, so if I take the cutoff here and lower that down and raise up the resonance, we can then press compare and it's going to take those back to what they were just a second ago. So if you'd like to experiment a, a little bit, um, then you can always use compare to do that. Just keep in mind that if you have auto save turned on and say it's set for every five minutes or every 10 minutes, if it saves, you're not going to be able to go back to your original settings. So for instance, if I were to even control S to save, notice that the compare here goes away and we can then no longer go back to those original settings. So this is only going to apply or work if you have not saved yourself or if autosave has not made an adjustment. So now we can go back. And I'm just going to control click to take these back to their original settings. Copy will allow us to copy any adjustments that we've made here and paste those into a, another instance of auto filter that we may have open within our song. Next here we have filter one and filter two. These two filters, uh, the second is disabled by default when we are working within our default patch here. And a lot of the, uh, some of the other ones, it will be disabled as well. We cannot disable filter one. We don't have that option here within the drop down menu. In filter two, we can see that that is available down at the very bottom. And within this drop down menu, we have several different filter types that we can choose from. We have a ladder filter with three different slopes, an analog state variable filter, 12 and 24 dB, 
a digital state variable filter with a 12 dB slope, a comb filter, and a zero delay low pass 24 dB filter. Now going into the technical, technical details of each one of these is beyond the scope of this video, but the best thing would be to just experiment with these and use your ears to figure out what they do, what they sound like, what they're gonna do to your sound. And as we go through this tutorial, I'm going to just play a, a bit around with these in tandem with the other settings, just so you have a general idea of what they're going to do after we kind of talk about what each of these parameters uh, does and how they function. With that said, uh, one important thing to keep in mind, however, is when we're working with these different filter types, the state variable filters can blend between low pass, band pass, and high pass. So when we have a state variable filter selected, we then have a slider that becomes available where we can move between these different modes. So if I, we already have the analog state variable filter selected here and we can see that we have a slider available. Now take note of this pop-up screen where it says filter one type that shows up. If I click hold, then we can see we're on low pass. And then as I move, we introduce a bit of band pass. We can see the percentage. As we move to the center, we get by our band pass and then begin to introduce the high pass. If I move all the way to the right, we can see that we're just strictly on high pass. And again, this is only going to be applicable to the state variable filters. If I come to a ladder filter, we no longer have that slider available to us. Next, notice that we have a filter spread here and uh, some kind of blank gray areas. There's no information here, but as soon as we activate filter two, we'll see that we then have the filter spread available to us and we can choose between minus two octaves all the way up to plus two octaves. And these are adjusted in semitones. If I control click, then we are taken to the center and this is going to apply no spread. Next to that, we have chained and parallel. Now, when we have chained active, the filters are going to work in series. So filter one will apply its settings and then move to filter two and so on. If I select parallel, then the settings that are within filter one and filter two will be applied to our incoming signal simultaneously. Next to that, we have drive, and this allows you to adjust the filter's feedback overdrive with a range of zero to 100%. And in the upper right-hand corner, we have one of the most important parameters within the device, the cutoff. And here we have a range between 30 hertz all the way up to 16 kilohertz. This is going to set the cutoff frequency and control the overall sound for both filters one and two in regards to what is going to be allowed to pass through this uh, device. The cutoff can also be modulated by the envelope and or the LFO by using these vertical uh, sliders here to the right. If the slider is in the center position, if I click and hold, we see that's at 0%, then no effect is going to be applied to our cutoff. So if the LFO is at 0%, we will have no modulation to our cutoff. At the very bottom here, we have resonance control, and we have a range between 0.1 and 100%. And this is going to control the resonance of the frequency at which, which we've chosen in our cutoff to cut our signal. It's going to boost that particular range, that small range of frequencies at our cutoff area. So if we have 738 hertz selected and we boost the resonance, it's going to boost a small area at that 738 hertz cutoff frequency. And let's go ahead and listen to some sounds here now that we've talked about some of these beginning parameters. I'm actually gonna disable filter two. Let's leave this. Let's see, do I wanna leave this on ladder low pass? Yeah, we'll leave that there. And the cutoff, let me take that down. Actually, I'll put this up to 16 kilohertz, start playback. I'll take the resonance down a bit. Take the gain down a bit. So we don't really hear much of an effect because our cutoff is all the way at 16 kilohertz, but as we drop this down, we can see that this functions as any filter that we might use within our music.
Now, looking at this envelope control, this ties in with the side chain. These work in tandem together. So if if we go ahead and activate the side chain, I'll close this out for a moment and unmute my little drum track here and play back again. Okay, I'll F3 and open up the console. Here is my bass drum kick. I will expand out and I'm gonna remove this for a second so you can see how I got this in there. We wanna to come to the sends area, click on the plus button. Here we have side chains and we can see our synth box, which is here, the one that we're working with. Select that and let's just send that at full 10 plus. I'll close that back out. F3 to close the console. F4 to access the inspector and open up our auto filter. So then now that we've sent that bass drum to the side chain of our auto filter on the synth box, we should then hear how that affects, but not immediately because remember our vertical fader here for the envelope is right now set to 0%. So I'll go ahead and play back. But then as I raise this up, drop the cutoff. And we can hear how that works quite clearly. And we can also apply this to the resonance. So if I raise this up, I could even take that into the negative and take the envelope here into the negative. So we're basically cutting the frequency and the resonance whenever that bass drum kicks. So if I raise the cutoff back up, that cutoff back down a bit and then let's go back into the positive for our envelope on the cutoff and our resonance take the cutoff down a, little, a bit even more okay and so we can see how that works there I'll control click to take these back now next to that moving on we have the envelope length and this allows you to adjust the attack and release time of the volume envelope and can be applied to both the cutoff and the resonance. So I'll start playback again. By default this is going to be on auto but let me go ahead and play back and let's take that auto off all the way at 23 milliseconds. If I take this all the way back down just to make it clear. So we're getting more of our signal through as we move all the way to the right. And I'll put this back on auto. Okay, now what about the LFO? This is going to be controlled with the sliders here to the right and these are both at zero percent so we have no effect of that we've just been focusing on our envelope coming from our bass drum here and I'm actually going to turn the side chain off and do away with that effect for the moment and within the envelope section here we have a small window is displaying what's happening with our settings in regards to the particular waveform that we've decided to use or 16 step mode as well as the LFO speed. Now for the LFO we can choose between 16 step, triangle, sine, sawtooth, or square. And we can see that this visual display changes depending on which one that we have selected. Now we can also change the LFO speed down below. By default, sync is gonna be on, and this is going to allow us to choose a den denomination between 164th triplet and four bars, 
in relation to our song tempo, which is currently set to 120 BPM. Now, we can also set this uh, LFO speed to run independently of our song tempo. If I deselect sync, then we can choose between a range of hertz settings, starting with 0.1 hertz or 0.10 hertz, all the way up to 30 hertz. And we can see again in the display, we have a visual representation of what's happening there. So if I were to take this down to one, then this is basically going to be one cycle per second. So we've got one, two, three, four. And I'll go ahead and turn the sync back on. Also note that we can click in this window here to choose a setting as well for the, with sync on, or we can just click and manually enter in a value with sync off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select a sine wave and then set this to one bar and go ahead and play back. And of course, uh, we have no effect from our LFO because we're currently set to 0%. But as I raise this up, we can clearly see <clears throat> or hear rather uh, how our audio is being affected by the sine wave. If I change the LFO speed here, we're basically getting a doubling at half. Now here we're right on that bass drum at a quarter note. The triplets. And if, again, we can apply this to the resonance as well. Let me take the gain down a bit. We can also invert. Bring in filter two. These are running in parallel. Let's try chain. Filter spread. Back to parallel. Wow, 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 wow,
Okay, so I hope you're beginning to see how you can tweak these different settings to get the sound that you're looking for. Uh, lastly, I'll start this back again real quick and let's listen to the other waveforms that we can choose from, including the 16 step. <laughs> Our triangle. Sawtooth. And our 16 step. And actually for the 16 step, these basically are going to divide up whatever denom denomination that we have set here. So I want to choose something where this is going to be very apparent. So I'll choose, I want one bar and I'm just trying to set this up to be as uh, obvious as possible and kind of make this on off for the steps. I'll go ahead and play back. So you'll notice here that our indicator moves along. Basically with each bar that we go through, we have one cycle of our 16 steps when we have this set to one bar. If I take that to half a bar, then we get two cycles for each bar, and so on. Okay, so I think you get the idea here of how you can use these different settings. And next to that, you've seen me constantly adjusting the gain. I'm hearing clipping in my headphones. I'm hoping that it's not gonna sound too bad within the edited video. I'm using a limiter within my video editing software, so hopefully that will protect your speakers. We, uh, I disengaged the auto setting here earlier on in the video, but you can always select auto to have auto filter take care of the gain automatically. 
Now, next to that, lastly, we have mixed, which is going to allow you to blend between the process signal and the original audio. So all the way to the right at 100%, we are hearing the uh, fully processed signal. As we move to the left, we're going to introduce the original audio and uh, have more of a blend of the two. So I t if I take that auto back off on the gain, I'm gonna turn this down just to be on the safe side. Playback. And then I'll move to the left to introduce some of the original audio back in. Okay, so you get an idea of how the mix knob works. And this is basically, uh, I think, where we will wrap up. I hope that you feel a bit more confident with the controls within the auto filter. Look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.